Hello, Panther educators. This screencast is going to focus on the Google Classroom setup protocols for the 2021 school year based on parent feedback from last spring's emergency remote learning situation. Administration has decided to implement some protocols to try to establish consistency in Google Classroom assignment naming conventions and your actual classroom setup. I'm going to take you through the setup process right now, and I will talk about the uh, organization of assignments in a separate screencast, which you will have access to as well. So first thing you want to do um, in a previous video, I showed you how to archive classes. I highly recommend that you do that. Now we're going to set up new classes for the 2021 school year. So you come into classroom, you click the plus, you click create class, and it will automatically bring up this dialogue. Okay, so your class name, your section, this is extremely important in middle school. In high school, that's probably most likely the period of the day that you meet the class. Your subject, uh, calculus, uh, AP bio, uh, AP lit, uh, algebra one room, uh, whatever room that you're in, please put your room number in there. Uh, please put as much information in here as possible. One of the things uh, that we heard from parents was that on the home page, they weren't always able to tell what class their uh, son or daughter should have been looking at and working in. So as much information as you can put in there would be great. Uh, just so you know, when you set up a class, your name as the lead teacher appears on the tile on the home page, like you see here with Emily Kalman in this sixth grade library class. I'm a student in that class. So they will see your name here. So you don't necessarily have to put your name in the title of the class unless you think it's easier for your students. Okay, so I have a high school and a middle school sample class set up here. So let me open the high school class. And um, once you uh, set up your class, you'll, be, you'll come to this page, you click the gear, and it's going to bring you in, you'll be able to see all the information that I just entered, right? Uh, for section, I put period six for this high school class, I'll show you the middle school class in just a second, room C19, subject world history. Now down here, um, let, let me, uh, let me just switch over to the middle school class real quick, just to show you something. Um, I used uh, Dana Hines information for ancient civilizations here. And when we click the gear and go in, notice, um, I notice the, the section numbers are really important to middle school because you have a rotating schedule and, um, you know, classes are identified by the section, not necessarily by a period of the day. So, uh, I put in here eight S ancient civilizations. That's how it will show up on the student's homepage as well as mine. Class description, Mesopotamia to Rome, full send. I understand uh, students will find that funny. I don't know. Uh, section 8S, a little redundant, but won't hurt. Room 209, subject social studies. All right. Um, and now we come out down here to the general tab. Here's your class code. Um, this is what you give students to join the class, which you'll still be able to do in the hybrid scenario um, when kids are in front of you in class. I'm going to talk about how to add class who may be remote, uh, how to add students who may be remote to classroom in just a second. Stream. Okay, I would recommend students can only comment on the stream. You have three options here. Students can post and comment. If you want students to be able to generate a post so, you, so they can just ask a question on the stream. Hey, I have a question about this, that, or whatever, right? Um, you would pick this one. Only teachers can post or comment. That means you can post, you can comment on your post or co-teacher's post, but students can't comment at all. I like this one, but again, that's personal preference. Classwork on the stream. Again, here you have three options. I like condensed notifications. So when I put an assignment on uh, my uh, in my classroom, on my stream page, which remember is the page that students land on when they open that classroom, from the classroom homepage, um, it will say Todd Whitman added Latin American revolutions assignment. And that's it. That's condensed notification. They would click on that and it'll take them to the assignment or they can go to the classwork page and it'll take them to that assignment. Show attachments and details. This is if you want everything that you're posting for those assignments to show up on the stream. I don't recommend it. That's going to get very cumbersome and cluttered. We're trying to avoid that. That was a complaint that we had from parents. Um, 
there was just so much information to sift through and classrooms looked so different from teacher to teacher. So I'm recommending condensed notifications, high notifications, then nothing uh, assignment wise would post on that stream page. I don't recommend that only because remember that's the landing page that students enter first when they enter the classroom. So it's, I think it's nice to have them uh, see assignments that you've posted. Again, it's personal preference, but I think condensed notifications works best. Show deleted items, only you can see it. Uh, that's just gonna clutter up your stream. I would, I would get rid of that. I leave it off. Guardian summaries. This is a big change from the spring. In the spring, since we weren't actually grading students, we were just checking for completion participation, we were relying on guardian summaries because really that was the only way to communicate to parents uh, apart from you know individual emails. If assignments had been completed, turned in late, not turned in at all, or missing. Um, so guardian summaries was really important. We emphasized that. However, we are going with a full return to Sapphire grading, and we want to push students and parents to the Sapphire grade portal to check all official grades. So we're asking you to turn off or leave off guardian summaries because when I get into the grading in just a second down here, I'll explain why, but it can create uh, two different grades between the Google Classroom gradebook and the Sapphire gradebook. And now you've got more questions to answer. So we are saying turn off guardian summaries, use Sapphire as your official gradebook, which is what we've always done, except for last spring into the emergency remote learning. Okay, Google Meet, here is your integrated Meet code. So I recommend that you uh, turn this on. Uh, when you first set up the class, you'll have to uh, generate the code. It'll have a little generate button right here. Click that, and then it shows up. You can copy the code and paste it other places or reset the code if you have uh, unwanted visitors uh, from other classes popping up. You can just reset the code, and then students have to use that new code to get in. Uh, this is where you toggle the visible to students on and off. This um, Right now, it will show up on my homepage. I turn that off my Google Classroom landing page, I mean, turn it off and it disappears, right? So if you don't want kids uh, joining the meeting, um, just toggle it off uh, and toggle it on. Now, we're not quite sure about our Zoom subscription at this point. Right now, the tech department is getting the quote from Zoom and trying to figure out subscription options. So uh, I would recommend that you set up Meet and have it ready to go if you need it. Even if we have a Zoom subscription, if you prefer to use Meet for uh, any reason, you certainly can. And we're recommending that you use the Meet code through Classroom only. There are multiple ways to push out a Google Meet code to students. We're recommending that you use the Google Classroom integrated link. It's much more secure than any other uh, way to push out a Meet code to students. Okay, down to grading. This again, related to the Guardian summaries above, in order to keep things as consistent as possible, we're asking you, this is the default, we're asking you to keep it no overall grade. Now, in the past, and especially last spring, you may have used total points or weighted by category and had Google Classroom gradebook calculating grades, but we don't wanna do that because unless everything is exactly the same as in Sapphire and you're entering grades at exactly the same time in Sapphire and Google Classroom gradebook, you will most likely have different grades for every student at any one time. That is going to create a problem. So please leave this no overall grade. Again, we're trying to push students and parents to the Sapphire portal to get all their official grading information. That hopefully will alleviate a lot of communication issues uh, and, and save you a lot of time writing emails explaining why grades are inconsistent or whatever. All right, now, categories, even though we're not using the Google Classroom gradebook, I would still recommend that you set this up with anything that you normally use as a category in your uh, classroom, right? So I have tests, homework, uh, projects, and participation. So tests, normally, uh, I'm not a 100-point test guy. I was a points possible, so but I'll just go 100. Homework, my default homework is 10 points. Projects, uh, I'll just put 50 in here 
participation, I'll put five. Maybe you're going to give a daily participation grade if we're in hybrid, uh, hybrid or full remote. So uh, what that does is and I'll, I'll, you'll see this in the next uh, video that I do on the assignments protocol. You'll see that uh, when you select the category test, it will autofill 100 in the point total, which you can obviously change. And you can come back in here into settings and change it anytime. So you get uh, you know, a week into the school year and you're like, you know what, I think I want 15 as my default homework. You can come in and change it anytime. And you can add a grading category. Let's say you do uh, a, a daily warm up, right? And that's your little anticipatory set that you're doing with a, with a question in Classroom or a poll in Zoom or Google Meet. Um, you can enter a new category, daily warm-up, and 10 points. And there you go. We click Save. And uh, there we go. Now, on your home page here, notice your class code is there. Your Google link meet, uh, uh, sorry, your Google meet link is here. And um, it's telling me right now that it's not visible to students. I don't have it on. So if I want to go in and change that, I just go down to meet, toggle that on, click save. And now back on my homepage, there you go, right? Students can just click that. They can see it and they can go. Now I may want to, uh, you may want to change your theme or upload your own photo. This is ancient civilization, so maybe the earbuds don't really go along with that, but you know, it's not my call. Um, if you click the toggle uh, button here, you can see, and students can do the same, they can see all the other class information down here, which is why I said fill in as much of that information as you can on the class description window. All right, uh, classwork. I am uh, going to just go through this really, really quickly because we've got uh, another video on assignments. So you can create an assignment, which is, you know, attachments and directions, which is what we use it most for quiz assignment, which is going to give you the option to upload or create a Google self grading quiz using Google forms. And, uh, you can use Chromebook locked mode, which means students on a Chromebook can't open any other tabs while they're taking the quiz. You can ask a question, which is great for that anticipatory set warm up for the day or your exit ticket to uh, to gauge participation at the end of a lesson uh, material this is what you would ch uh, you would check um, for you know if you wanted to push out just a reading assignment or an image or a folder of images anything that you want students to have access to but they don't really have to submit anything and reuse post this is going to be really really helpful uh, this allows you to reuse anything in an in another Google class, a current class, an archive class from last year or five years ago. Um, it's, it's really, really helpful. And topic, this is going to be extremely important this year. We've decided, we, not me, administration has decided that we are going to organize classroom by weeks of the school year. So it's easier for students and by extension parents to find information on assignments that are due this week in the school year. More on that in the next uh, video as well. Here's our quick link to a Google Meet. Click that and you go right into your Meet. Uh, Google Calendar, this will show you all the assignments that you have posted currently. And your Drive folder, this is where uh, copies of all the assignments that you've pushed out to students are located. All right, people. All right, so here on the people page, um, Normally, you can give All right, here on the people page, um, this is going to be important this year, especially for your fully remote students, because uh, you're going to have to add them without giving them the class in code, uh, the code in class. Okay, the people page, um, this is going to be really important this year because uh, typically I recommend that you give kids the class code, either put it on the projector, write it on the whiteboard, chalkboard in your class and have students just you know enter the code when they go to Google Classroom. Uh, but for your fully remote students, you're not gonna see them in person and it's gonna be hard to get them the code. Uh, so the easiest thing to do is just look at your class roster in Sapphire 
and go to students, click the plus, and we're going to add new students. So I just start typing uh, Billman and that comes up. Uh, and I type Heilman and Janet Heilman. And who else do I want to add? Uh, I want to add Kathy Reedy. Okay, so uh, when you start typing, you'll get uh, a nice drop down list of students. Make sure you're selecting the correct student and then you click invite. Okay, and in Classroom now, you'll notice uh, that it says invited behind the people who haven't yet accepted the invitations and they're grayed out. When they log into Google Classroom, the classroom will show up on their the tile will show up on their homepage and they have to click accept to join. There is a way to bulk add from an exported roster on a spreadsheet, an exported roster from Sapphire on an Excel spreadsheet. That takes a little bit of advanced know-how. It's not hard to do, but if you don't know how to do it, don't worry, just use that method that I showed you. Okay, the last tab here, grades. Again, we're not using the grade book. However, when you start entering assignments in Google Classroom, the Classroom Gradebook will show assignments with student grades here. That's why it's important on the settings page that you leave grading no overall grade, right? Because it won't display a grade to students, okay? They aren't gonna be able to see it. You won't be able to see it either, uh, but just please leave it that way to avoid any possible confusion. Okay, so I hope all that makes sense. I know that's a whole lot of stuff. Some of those procedures are new. Please watch the next video on assignments and using topics to organize classroom this year. If you have any questions about the technical side of things, please let me know. If you have any questions about the protocols, please talk to your building administrator. Thanks, everybody.